Welcome to lecture 4 of module 2 on heat transfer. We are continuing our discussion in the area of one dimensional and steady state heat transfer. In this lecture, we will start discussing on extended surface heat transfer. From the name itself, you can understand that heat transfer surface is extended, that means we have increased the surface area. So, uh, the heat exchange phenomena that is what we are going to study in this lecture by increasing in increasing the surface area of the heat exchanger. Now, the question is that why this extended surface is necessary? We understand that heat uh, transfer is accompanied by cooling a gas or heating a gas or cooling a liquid or a heating a liquid and so heat transfer phenomena uh, is accompanied uh, with the, a solid surface and the uh, uh, and the fluid medium where heat transfer coefficient is involved and it has been found that in certain situation the heat transfer coefficient is very poor and then uh, for practical applications practical necessity we may have to increase the rate of heat transfer and therefore extended surface heat transfer concept has come now uh, if we just think about that in case of any convective heat transfer, we have told that rate of heat transfer is equal to convective heat transfer coefficient into area of heat transfer into the driving force. Okay. Now, so what happens is that if you have to increase the heat transfer rate, then what we have to do is we have to uh, 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 increase either the heat transfer coefficient or heat transfer area or the driving force. Now, when we call, tell about that driving force the delta T, delta T is normally or usually it is fixed by the external world. For example, you have to heat a fluid up to a certain temperature, say suppose preheating a liquid stream for a distillation column. So, that is already being decided how much a heat transfer is needed for this kind of situation. Similarly, you have some hot fluid coming from a say uh, flu, a flu gas chimney and you want to take extract that heat. So, you know the temperature of the uh, uh, of the flue gas. So, the differential temperature also is mostly fixed by the external wall or by the problem of concern. So, therefore, we have little scope in doing something on delta T part to increase the rate of heat transfer. Now, then the other part is say heat transfer coefficient, yes we know that heat transfer coefficient or convective heat transfer coefficient this uh, value is very small particularly for gases and sometimes it is uh, also uh, not very high even some liquids also, but actually these values of H is governed by the hydrodynamic conditions of the fluid which are getting heated or which are getting cooled. So, therefore, it may so happen that uh, we have to increase the value of H. If we try to value increase the value of H, how much we can? We cannot increase infinitely uh, uh, the value of H because it is governed by the hydrodynamic conditions. Say for a for example, if you have a, uh, a liquid at a laminar flow, if you just convert it into a turbulent flow situation, you can increase the heat transfer coefficient by to some extent. We will see in future when we will be discussing in details about the convective heat transfer that heat transfer coefficient value can be increased by changing the velocity, by increasing the velocity or by changing some uh, hydrodynamic conditions. But the increase the increase in the heat transfer coefficient has some uh, limited uh, 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 is limited it is not uh, indefinitely it can be increased okay then uh, it also happens that uh, uh, for a gas gas system it is hard to increase the heat transfer coefficient for this kind of uh, uh, for gases for uh, heat transfer between gas and gas uh, with the help of a solid uh, barrier. So, from the gas to the solid and solid to the gas, it is very hard 
to increase the heat transfer coefficient uh, for this kind of uh, situations. So, what is needed now? Then another option is left with us, which is nothing but the heat transfer area. And this heat transfer area, yes, it is uh, mostly uh, dependent on the designer who is designing the heat exchanger equipment. So, therefore, uh, uh, the concept of extended heat transfer has come into picture. So, one can increase the heat transfer area by uh, putting some kind of uh, extended surface onto the basic uh, equipment. And that way, uh, uh, that heat transfer rate can be substantially increased, it can be several hundred times increases possible. We will see in, in, in successive uh, 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 or in, 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 in subsequently, we will see that how uh, the heat transfer coefficient can increase. Now, if we have to have as I discussed a, a quicker uh, heat transfer in many situations we may be requiring, then we need to have uh, the, uh, the most important option at hand is that increasing the surface area for heat transfer. Okay? And this increasing the surface area or that is that nothing but the extended surface, this is obtained by attaching a rectangular metal strip or annual rings which is called as fins okay, to the surface of heat transfer. And the typical application areas for these fins are heat transfer for transformers and motors, ice engines or motorcycles and the various heat exchangers, uh, they use this uh, extended surface heat, uh, heat, uh, 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 heat transfer phenomena. And the various type of fins which are used uh, for different situations are uh, the individual rods known as spin fins or spines and they can be cylindrical spine, truncated conical spine, parabolic spine, then continuous plates okay, known as fins and then these fins can be longitudinal spins or radial or circumferential fin with various profiles such as rectangular, trapezoidal, parabolic, truncated conical etcetera. So, what we would see is in the next slide, we will try to have a look into different types of fins uh, uh, that are available uh, and that is being used. So, you see that uh, there are some pictures we have uh, discussed, uh, there is that longitudinal fin of rectangular profile, then longitudinal fin of trapezoidal profile, you see uh, this is the trapezoidal profile here. Similarly, longitudinal fin of parabolic profile, you can understand that this is there is a curvature and this is nothing but the parabolic profile. Then we have a circular tube with fins of rectangular profile, again this is a rectangular profile, we can see that this, this is particularly this is a rectangular profile. Then sir, this is the rectangular profile, then here it is cylindrical tube equipped with radial or it is also called circumferential fins and you can see that it is this is cut here to see the profile, here it is a rectangular profile again. Similarly, it can be a uh, uh, truncated conical profile like this. Then uh, we can have several other kind of like spines, which is a, just simply a rod protruding outward. Okay, that cylindrical spine, it is thorough, thoroughly that its, its area is same. Truncated conical spine, so its area is continuously changing and also we have parabolic spine, here the surface area is also changing, not only that the curvature is also there, it is a parabolic curvature. So, we can understand certain things that fins of could be of uh, longitudinal, it could be radial or uh, uh, circumferential, it co could be a simple cylindrical uh, pins. Along with that, we can also understand that the profiles could be rectangular, it could be trapezoidal, it could be truncated conical, it could be parabolic. That means what? That the fin surface area can be changing along the length of the fin. So, we will say that this is the length of the fin, which one is protruding outward, that is the length of the fin, this is the length of the fin, this is the length of the fin. So, that surface area is changing along the length of the fin. So, one thing we can understand from here, so if there is a heat transfer from here into this direction, so what is happening? Here the heat transfer area remains constant all through, 
but here the heat transfer area is continuously varying. Here, similarly, the case here, heat transfer area is continuously varying. So, these are the situations which makes the system little bit more complicated when there is a variation in area. Now, uh, we will see that through some mathematical derivations, we will try to find out how the temperature varies along the direction of the field, along the direction of the fins, how the temperature varies and that is a very important information that we have to find out to find out that how much heat transfer is possible by the fin, how much enhancement in the heat transfer rate is possible by the application of fins. If we have to now know that, we have to do some kind of mathematical analysis for that. Okay. So, uh, we will start now some mathematical analysis here and see that uh, uh, how uh, the temperature profile for the fins are possible. So, to start with what we will do is we will uh, see a, a rectangular fin okay? and for that let me uh, draw the diagram first. Yeah. So, this is the fin that is extended to this direction okay. and sorry. So, consider so th this is the surface and this is okay. So, this is the uh, uh, fin that is the rectangular fin and that is protruded and say the, the length that is it has protruded out is say L is the length and say the this is the thickness if I denote it by h and so this is the breadth of the fin if I denote it by say capital B okay. and say this is the direction of heat transfer that is x and consider uh, at certain point a x consider a differential element of thickness d x. Okay. Now, what I was trying to say is that this is a solid wall kind of thing and there is a fin rectangular fin that is protruding out and this wall are uh, is at some hot uh, you can say it is a hot surface. So, it is a hot surface the so temperature heat is being transferred from this surface through the fins to the environment and say environmental temperature is uh, uh, T infinity is the temperature at the environment and temperature of the surface is say T uh, we will say that temperature at the uh, surface will take as T w okay, and wall, wall temperature and we can see that the heat transfer area is basically this area, this area is the heat transfer area from this as well as uh, this will be the heat transfer area from this surface and this surface. Now, from the hot surface the heat transfer area is this one, this is the heat transfer area which is nothing but the this area okay, this is the heat transfer area. So, from this this area or this through this area this is because it is a, uh, a rectangular this is a rectangular shaped one this is the same as the rectangle. So, the heat transfer area remains all through the constant it is it is coming from the hot surface to this and then from the fin it is up till this point up till this point it is 
uh, coming to both the sides, it is just convected out in both the sides of the environment and when it comes here, the heat is convected from this side. So, what is happening when you say about a differential section, what is happening that heat is coming here, part of the heat is coming to this side and part of the heat getting uh, uh, convected away from the surface to the environment. Okay? So, if we just do the material balance and we have uh, we have discussed it is a it is a steady state phenomena and it is one dimensional phenomena that means, heat transfer is only along x direction and it is a steady state phenomena. So, there is no accumulation of heat energy in any section of the fields okay, or in during this process. So, what happens is if we do uh, the energy balance for the differential section, what we, we find is that uh, uh, rate of energy in heat energy in at left of the differential control volume okay, left phase that would be equal to the rate of heat energy out at right phase plus rate of heat energy convected away to the environment. Okay. So, then what we find is rate of heat energy in at the left phase would be and we can understand that this is a solid body. So, heat transfer will be by the mode of conduction within the fins the heat transfer will be by the mode of conduction. So, again we will go back uh, to Fourier's phenomenological law of conduction what it says the rate of heat transfer at this point is uh, minus k, k is the thermal conductivity of the fin material and area the area would be say if I say this is A, K is the area of heat transfer, which is nothing but this heat transfer area in this case, it is coming like this way heat transfer area and it is and as because it is one dimensional and steady state, I will write perfect differential that d t by d x at point x that is the incoming energy and this should be equal to the rate of heat energy out at right phase that means uh, minus k into a into d t by d x at point x plus d x that is going out plus something else is going out in the form of convection to the environment. So, what we will write is that it is equal to plus h is the convective heat transfer coefficient between uh, the fin material and the environment okay, and h into area of heat transfer. What is the area of heat transfer? Area is so, if I say this is the perimeter or this is the perimeter okay, this this is your perimeter if this is perimeter. So, perimeter into the d x. So, this is the perimeter okay, into this d x that will give you the this things total convection area. So, that is equal to P into d x and then the temperature at this point temperature in P surface temperature is T. I do not know what is the temperature we are finding out, out that temperature. So, T minus and environmental temperature is T infinity is the free stream temperature of the environment. So, then this is the basic equation and from there 
what we can find out if we do the simplification of this equation we we could get like uh, uh, d 2 t by d x 2 into d x k into area and that will be equal to h into p into d x into t minus t infinity. So, it says that d 2 t by d x 2 minus h into p into uh, p by k into a into t minus t infinity equals to 0. Okay. Now, we will define a terminology m is equal to over h p by k a. This implies that we can write this equation as d 2 t by d x 2 equals to or minus m square t minus t infinity equals to 0. Now, we will define a temperature as the reduced temperature say t bar. So, if we say another thing that t bar is the reduced temperature and that is equal to say t minus t infinity, then we can write this implies that d 2 t bar by d x 2 minus m square t bar that equal to 0, because that d t bar is equal to d t as t infinity is constant. Okay. So, this is the equation and now what we can get? We can uh, get a solution uh, of this equation is a simple differential equation and the solution of this equation is of the form uh, that you can go uh, find out any uh, differential uh, calculus book and you will find any method in any mathematics books you will be finding out the solution of this equation and the solution of the equation is d t bar equals to is written like that uh, c 1 e to the power m x plus c 2 I am sorry c 1 e to the power minus m x plus c 2 e to the power plus m x. Okay. Here x is equal to okay t bar is equal to this. Also, this solution uh, can be written in another form uh, taking the in the hyperbolic form. This is also written as say a 1 cos hyperbolic m x plus a 2 sin hyperbolic m x. Now, we have got the expression for temperature with some constant c 1, c 2 or a 1, a 2 as you like uh, the way you want to put the format you want to put. Now, we have to find out the values of these constants. So, to find out the values of the constants as, because as the differential equations is a second order differential equation, we need to have two boundary conditions for this. So, the boundary conditions are the first boundary condition is pretty uh, simple it says that at x equal to 0 okay so t bar will be equal to t w minus t infinity and that let us say that this is equal to t naught bar okay at x equal to 0, it is say t naught bar. Now, what about the second boundary condition? Now, there are certain aspects in regarding the second boundary condition. Second boundary condition means it is the values of it is at value of a x till a certain length of the fin. So, what we will do is that we will uh, divide it into three specific cases. So, if I say the case 1, case 1 we will say that the fin is infinitely long at 
what does it mean if a fin is infinitely long? So, that uh, we can understand that temperature of the fin if we just say that this is the length of the fin. Okay. So, it was it will be uh, gradually changing 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 and and it will be asymptotic to the uh, empty infinity values. So, this is the t infinity value and this is a uh, what I say T w at the wall. So, it will be finally, it will become asymptotic. So, here at this point at this point uh, T w or say temperature sorry temperature uh, would be nearly equal to T infinity at this point. So, and this is happening when uh, L tends to infinity. Okay. So, this is the condition that a fin is infinitely long. When the fin is infinitely long, then we can say that uh, x tends to infinity will have uh, T bar is equal to T infinity minus T infinity and that is equal to 0. So, this is the second, second boundary condition for case 1 and first boundary condition is known to us. Now, for case 2 this is not always the situation and practically this is never a situation because as we uh, what is the use of this particular section when the temperature is uh, equal to the environmental temperature there will be no further exchange of heat between the fin and the environment. So, this is never a practical situation, but this is a, th a theoretical case, this is a hypothetical condition, this is one particular condition we can, which can be existing. Okay. Now, in case of case 2, okay, this is the most practical situation when you have that fin has got a definite length. So, fin has got a fin is of definite length. So, if the fin is say suppose that it is, it is the case 1 case case 1 and in case 2 the fin has got a definite length say suppose this this is the length of the fin a definite length. So, under that situation what happens is that under as, as it is a steady state situation at this point at this steep at the end whatever is coming out by conduction has to be going through this by convection. What I was saying is if you see here that it is a definite length L the kind condition second condition under this situation it is coming 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 and from this side from this side it is going uh, away to the environment, but some heat is coming here and from this region whatever is has come to by conduction has to go out to the environment by the mode of convection. So, that is the uh, boundary condition that we should apply here. So, if that is the boundary condition then what we will say is that heat is coming by conduction up till point a n at point L is minus k into area into d t by d x at x is equal to L should be equal to again the h into area of heat transfer into t minus t infinity. So, at point x equal to L. So, what does it mean that minus k d t by d x at x is equal to L should be equal to h into t minus t infinity at x is equal to L. So, this indicates that this t will be the temperature at x equal to L. Okay. So, this is the second case or second boundary condition and then third case for the third boundary condition is the tip of the fin is insulated tip or you can say or end of the fin is insulated. what does it mean? That means, that uh, if we go back if we see here that this part is insulated. So, there is no heat transfer from this side to the environment. 
So, if we consider the case 2, in the case 2 situation what we have written that minus k d t by d x at x equal to l is equal to this. So, this does not exist because it is insulated. So, this will become 0. So, that means what I will write is minus k d t by d x at say x is equal to l equals to 0 that implies that d t by d x at x is equal to l will be equal to 0. So, this is the condition uh, for the third case and this is the second boundary condition for the case 3. Now, we have understood that three different conditions can prevail in case of a field and also we have understood that what should be the boundary conditions for different cases that we have seen. Now, if we try to apply these boundary conditions to solve the basic uh, differential equation, we will find out that what happens to be the temperature profiles for different cases. Now, let us start with case 1 to find out the temperature profile. So, now we are uh, finding out the temperature profiles. So, for case 1 and we know the boundary conditions. Now, for case 1, the boundary condition if I summarize here is that three things we know. One is the temperature profile we know general temperature profile is T 1 is equal to C 1 e to the power minus m x plus C 2 e to the power plus m x. This is the general temperature profile and the boundary conditions with it is that uh, uh, T bar at x equal to 0 is equal to T naught bar and we have seen that for the first boundary condition, uh, the second boundary condition for case 1 is at x tends to 0 T bar equal to 0 as x tends to 0 sorry infinity T bar equals to 0 that is what. So, now if we apply these two boundary conditions what we find is that uh, due to application of uh, first boundary condition we get uh, T bar 0 is equal to C 1 plus C 2 and second boundary condition says uh, from the second boundary conditions we can find out that um, 0 is equal to 0 plus C 2 e to the power m x and this implies that C 2 is to be 0. Then what we find out then we can write that T naught bar is equal to C 1. Then we finally get the expression as that T bar by T naught bar is equal to e to the power minus m x and we know that T naught T bar is equal to T minus T infinity by T naught bar is equal to T w minus T infinity. So, this is the temperature profile for the first boundary condition. Now, the temperature profile for the second boundary condition it is little complicated. So, let us see that for second case, case uh, second case case 2 we have now here we will be writing the temperature profile for the simplicity of the analysis we will write the temperature profile as like this way that T bar is equal to A 1 cos hyperbolic m x plus a 2 sin hyperbolic m x. This is the temperature profile and the boundary conditions for these are as we told that T bar at x is equal to 0 already we have seen which is equal to T bar 0 and the other boundary conditions we have seen that this one minus k d t by d x at x equal to l minus k d t bar by d x at x is equal to l will be equal to h into t minus t infinity at x is equal to l. So, this is the second boundary conditions. Now, we have to apply these boundary conditions over here. 
once we apply the boundary conditions, we will see uh, that from first boundary condition. So, this is a first boundary condition, this is a second boundary condition. From first boundary condition, we get uh, T naught bar is equal to A 1. Uh, if we put uh, x equal to 0 cos hyperbolic m x is equal to 1. So, this is a, a 1 and sin hyperbolic equal to 0. So, T naught bar equal to a 1 this is the from the first boundary conditions so we get this. Now, we will apply second boundary condition. For second boundary conditions what we have to do we have to find out the d t bar by d x and we have to find out at x equal to l. So, d t bar by d x at x is equal to l is minus k a 1 m sin hyperbolic m l plus a 2 m cos hyperbolic m l and uh, minus k d t by d x is equal to this and uh, this is equal to uh, h into t minus t infinity at x is equal to l and that is equal to uh, h into a 1 cos hyperbolic m l plus a 2 sin hyperbolic m l. Okay. Now, from these two just simplification of this equation we can do like this way. So, we will write a 1 into sin hyperbolic m l plus h by m k cos hyperbolic m l okay, that is equal to minus uh, a 2 cos hyperbolic m l plus h by m k sin hyperbolic m l. Now, using this we can find out that a 2 equals to minus a 1 into sin hyperbolic m l plus h by m k cos hyperbolic m l okay, divided by cos hyperbolic m l plus h by m k sin hyperbolic m l. So, then we know what is a 1 we know that and if we put that expression over here then we can get a 2 is equal to minus t naught bar into uh, sin hyperbolic m l plus h by m k cos hyperbolic m l okay, divided by cos hyperbolic m l plus h by m k sin hyperbolic m l. Okay. So, this is becoming the expression for m a 2. Now, what we find? We will find out for t. So, t bar equals to or uh, t bar by t naught bar if I write directly it is becoming now uh, if we put the values of a 1 and a 2 we will get an expression like this cos hyperbolic m x into cos hyperbolic m l plus h pi m k cos hyperbolic m x sin hyperbolic m l okay, then minus sin hyperbolic m x sin hyperbolic 
m l minus h pi m k sin hyperbolic m x into cos hyperbolic m l okay. and this is divided by the denominator we have cos hyperbolic m l cos hyperbolic m l plus h pi m k sin hyperbolic m l. Now, from this we can write that t bar by t naught bar is equal to t minus t infinity by t w minus t infinity and this is equal to you see that cos a cos a cos b minus sin a sin b gives cos hyperbolic uh, a minus b. So, it is basically cos hyperbolic m into l minus x this m m into l minus x plus h by m k into sin hyperbolic m into l minus x divided by uh, cos hyperbolic m l plus h by m k sin hyperbolic m l. So, we can see that there is a pretty uh, similarity in the expression and this is uh, becoming the temperature profile for uh, case 2. Uh, this is the temperature profile for case 2 and now if we see for case 3, for case 3 again if we write the temperature expression that T bar already we have seen generalized temperature expression is a 1 cos hyperbolic m x plus a 2 sin hyperbolic m x okay. and the boundary conditions are we know that um, uh, T naught T at x equal to 0 reduced temperature is equal to T naught sorry. this and uh, this is I will say that first boundary condition and the second boundary condition is we know that d t bar by d x at x is equal to L and that is equal to 0 this is the second boundary condition. Now, if we apply the boundary conditions over here the from the first boundary conditions already we have seen that and it generates that t bar 0 is equal to a 1 because this part is 0 and from the second boundary conditions we can write that d t bar by d x at x is equal to L equal to 0 equals to a 1 m sin hyperbolic m L plus a 2 m cos hyperbolic m l. Okay. Now, from this we can write this implies that a 2 equals to minus a 1 tan hyperbolic m l. So, from this we can write that t bar equals to a 1 if we put these expressions over here we will write we will get cos hyperbolic m x into cos hyperbolic m l minus sin hyperbolic m x plus sin sorry sin hyperbolic m x into sin hyperbolic m l okay, and this divided by cos hyperbolic m l. So, that means this says we know that a 1 is equal to t naught bar we can write that uh, t bar by t naught bar 
again is equal to t minus t infinity by t w minus t infinity and this is equal to uh, this is cos a uh, cos b minus sin a sin b. So, we will write cos of l minus sorry. cos hyperbolic m l minus x by cos hyperbolic m l. Okay. So, this becomes the temperature profile for case 3 when the tip of the field is insulated, there is no heat transfer from the edge. Okay. Now, we have already got the uh, three uh, temperature profiles in the field, which is a function of the values x, uh, the length of the field that we have seen and we have seen for three different cases where the boundary conditions are different. Now, our next target is to see that uh, how efficient the fields are, because what we understand if we see, if we go back uh, uh, to the fin diagram, if you try to understand that uh, as we go along this direction, uh, temperature will is expect to expected to be as we go in this direction, temperature is expected to be decreasing. Okay? Temperature is expected to be decreasing uh, uh, along the length and as the temperature is decreasing, the driving force of heat transfer from the surface of the field to the env environment that is t minus t infinity will decrease. And if the driving force decreases, the efficiency that heat transfer will be uh, reduced. So, efficiency of the fin comes because the, uh, the fin would, would be that much efficient which had been uh, when it, it was in the initial stages of the fin where the length is small here the fin will be more efficient than this part, because in this part the driving force is less. Though the area is same, the heat transfer from this part will be much less compared to the this region. So, gradually the heat transfer rate will gradually decrease from the fin surface and therefore, we need to find out that uh, how long we should put the fin, how far we should put the fin. If we put uh, for a uh, infinitely long fin, what happens to the efficiency? And if we put a smaller fins, what happens to the efficiency? So, we have to find out the expressions for efficiency of the uh, fins for which the heat transfer is taking place from the heat fin surfaces. And the uh, one thing we should understand that uh, before we go to discuss about the efficiency, one thing we should understand that uh, whatever at steady state, whatever energy has come through this surface at this point. Okay. whatever energy has come to this at this point has to be transported by the fins, because it is a steady state condition. So, heat coming at this point will be transported by the fins at different places. So, therefore, we should say that uh, heat that has entered into the fin at its base is nothing but the rate of heat that has entered into the fin is nothing but the actual heat transfer by the fin. Okay. So, and what will be the theoretical or ideal condition? Ideal condition could have been that if all the surfaces of the fin would could have been maintained at this temperature, wall temperature which is the higher temperature, then everywhere the profile or the gradient would have been same. If everywhere the gradient is same, then heat transfer the driving force remains the same. That means, as I was telling that fin is becoming less efficient as we, as we make it more and more longer. Correct? Now, this is becoming because as we as it is becoming longer that temperature is gradually decreasing and so the driving force driving force between the environment and the fin surface is decreasing now if we can maintain the same driving force that means if we can maintain the temperature of the fin surface all through same then what is the performance of the fin at this point will be the same performance will be observed by the fin at this point but that is not a practically possible but there will be a a always a temperature drop from this side to this side and therefore, then efficiency term comes. So, when we say about this part which is not practically possible that is called ideal situation and this is the ideal situation or ideal condition that the whole surface of the fin is 
at base temperature that is called ideal condition. Therefore, what we will write is that efficiency of the fin is written as we will define at eta a which is nothing but fin efficiency and this is equal to actual heat transferred divided by heat would be transferred okay this is an hypothetical case ideal situation if entire fin area wire maintained at base temperature. Base temperature means in this present situation it is nothing but T w that is wall temperature that is the base temperature. Okay. But this is an ideal situation this is never a practical situation and this is the practical situation. Okay. Now, this can be we can write it as that uh, actual heat transfer and that is equal to as I told you that uh, it is nothing but minus k into the area into d t by d x at x equal to 0. Okay. And uh, so, this is uh, equal to uh, uh, that we can find out depending upon the temperature profiles for different cases we get we will find out from this that minus k a d t by d x at x equal to 0. We have found out the different temperature profiles for different situations. So, with this expression we can find out what will be the actual heat transfer and ideal condition is pretty simple that ideal heat transfer will be ideal in this situation it is uh, say uh, we can say that h into the total area if I say that this is the total area of heat transfer total area of heat transfer h a t total area of heat transfer into uh, uh, t uh, minus t infinity that is nothing but you can write as this is uh, h a into and that this t will be t w because everything is maintained at t w. So, h a t into t o bar. So, therefore, fin efficiency we can write as minus k into a into d t bar by d x at x equal to 0, because we know that d t is equal to d t bar divided by h into a this is the total heat transfer area from the fin that is useful for heat transfer by t naught bar. So, using this expression we can find out the fin efficiency of the uh, uh, fin that is being used and there is another uh, uh, term that is called fin effectiveness of the fin uh, effectiveness of the fin this is given as that rate of heat transfer with fin divided by rate of heat transfer without fin sorry rate of So, this is also one important thing that we would like to see that for any particular system what is the effectiveness of heat transfer. So, we can find out uh, that efficiency of the fin 
effectiveness of the fin. We will see for different cases we have discussed what is happening to be the effectiveness uh, efficiency of the fins that in the next lecture we will discuss on that how is the efficiency of the fin for different cases and then we will take up a problem and to see that how to calculate that uh, fin efficiency as well as uh, heat transfer total heat transfer due to fin surface and as well as the effectiveness of the fin we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you very much.